Hi, this video we are talking budgeting. You should never leave a first meeting with a client without at least having some kind of framework uh, as to how they establish their budget, when they establish the budget, uh, how it's going to be judged from an effectiveness and an efficiency standpoint, uh, and in what what's their methodology for budgeting. Most people don't have one, um, particularly small business owners, I should say. If a more uh, sophisticated organization may, but not always. And sometimes they have faulty ways in which they budget. Here are some typical ways uh, that uh, a business owner will budget. Um, it's arbitrary. <laughs> they, <laughs> they don't really have a strategy. They pick a number. Pick a number out of a hat. Uh, history. Well, we spend what we spent last year and the year before that. And I think we did increase a couple of years ago, but we've pretty much stayed there since then. Yeah. <laughs> Not in today's world, you can't afford to do that. So uh, another way is they say, well, I'm in the appliance industry, and so my trade magazines tell me for the appliance industry, we should invest 1% of gross revenue. 1%. Well, the problem with certainly arbitrary is not a good plan. <laughs> not a good plan. History, not a good plan. You are building your future for today and tomorrow, not for yesterday. Yesterday has absolutely nothing, particularly in today's world, has nothing to do. I mean, you can use it as a parameter, uh, but, a, but one small variable. If you're using it as your entire basis for how you're budgeting for 2017, of how you did it in 2014 or 2015, it's a different, you think it's a different world? And you could even ask them that. So you budget the same way, but is the competitive landscape any different? Is the world any different? Are things any more competitive? Or are they, are they less competitive in your industry? Because I think earlier when we talked, you agreed in the very beginning of our conversation that it's you know, much more competitive than it was three years ago. So arbitrary, history, not good. Uh, trade, here's, again, it's a parameter, but if they're basing their entire, because here's, here's what's not taken into consideration if you're just using an industry benchmark, uh, the, mark, the local marketplace. A national standard has no insight into a local marketplace and what the com competition may be here. They have no idea if you have a perception or image problem, if you have a, a you know another appliance store that just built around the corner from you or a, or a big box store that just came in. Um, they have no idea if you know your sales team really faltered and slacked off or your your you know goodness forbid something really bad happened to one of the business owners and so things really got off the rails and now you've got to get them back on track quickly i mean none of those variables in real life are ever taken into consideration uh when when some industry benchmark is being set on a national level so yes can you use it as one parameter sure but really, in the scope of things, look at all the other stack of things I just went through as quick examples. Now, if I really thought about it for length of time, there's, there's meant, you know, two, three times that, those variables that could exist. So industry benchmark, not a great uh, foundation either on which to budget. So what, what is? Well, a percentage of gross projected revenue. If you're not prepared to invest for where you want to go and what your possible and what's possible plausible for growth, how are you going to get there? I would never hop in my car with only enough gas to get me half a mile down the road if I really need to get to Rochester, would I? So, yes, you can mitigate your budget as you go. You can adapt, you can calibrate, but if you start with an impoverished model, um, and yet your goal is way up here, you're not giving yourself a, a, a chance, um, a viable chance to get there. So a percentage of, and we're going to talk about what those percentages could be, um, percentage of gross projected revenue, a percentage of projected net revenue, doesn't much matter. It'll change, it'll change um, the percentage, but you know what percentage you select, because if it's of gross, the percentage doesn't need to be quite as high, does it? But if it's of net, it, you, may, you, may need, you may need to be a, a higher percentage. Um, and also take into consideration, if you're basing it on net profit, part of your plan should be to drive their profit margins, to drive their profitability, because you're gonna tell more profitable stories and track and measure efficiencies and effectiveness 
in a much more real-time fashion than most traditional media ever has. So in driving their profit margins, I'm not even so sure, you know, you want to be careful on, on banking on just percentage of net profit, or at least be prepared to increase that as you see your profit margins eking up over the course of the second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter of the year. Um, so uh, also, here's another thing. Where are you at in that awareness, preference, insistence phase? If you have no holes barred, you have very, very little competition, which is not normally the case, but it could be. If you have very little competition, you're probably not going to need to invest as high a percentage. Um, however, if competition is really stiff or a brand new competitor just came in, don't you think that you may wish to invest a greater percentage to have a greater chance to get out ahead of that competitor and ward them off from taking market share from you. So here are a few parameters, uh, on, on this is all going off based on gross projected revenue. And and um, and when I when I say this, by the way, um, you can do it in one and two fashions: the entire gross revenue of the entire company, or just off the piece they wish to grow this next year. So let's say, for example, they say, well, what does success look like? Effectiveness to me looks like if we uh, we got our 12% increase in total gross revenue again this year as we did last year. That to me would be success. How much would that be? Now, they're gonna, you're, this is going to start to get to, to help you learn how much they trust you because they're going to start talking real revenue numbers with you now. You really need to know these. I mean, if you're if you're going to be um, a true partner for them, um, you really want to know what success looks like. And I mean, ideally, in an advisory role, you're helping them build equity in their brand as well. So to be able to talk with them about their balance sheet and where does brand equity fit on that balance sheet and shouldn't it fit on that balance sheet, those are real uh, business uh, consult questions. And that's where you want to strive towards. You want to get towards that. So you're going to start talking um, one of three percentage ranges: uh, four to six percent, seven and uh, sorry, four four to six percent, um, six to eight percent, nine to twelve percent, something like that. So there's there's the lower tier, middle tier, upper tier, and I'll have again a worksheet for you on this so that you can have a reference point to take a look at this. Um, but someone saying, you know, I mean, there's, for example, someone as successful as Subway, you mark 6%, um, and McDonald's, uh, you mark 5%, Heinz Ketchup, you mark 3%, and Heinz Ketchup is one of the biggest, if not the biggest brand, strongest brand, largest brand equity, uh, largest market share of their particular product in the world. And they mark they 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 earmark three uh, percent of revenue toward their marketing budget. So how can a business mark one or two percent? You're smarter than Heinz. <laughs> I mean, come on. So you're smarter than Subway. You know, you're only earmarking four or five percent. You're you're better than McDonald's. At four, you're only you're marking four percent. You're better than McDonald's, eh? You're better than Subway. Wow, they should be consulting with you. Um, Obviously, I'm being sarcastic, and you don't want to do that with them. But do give them solid examples, you know, of why your rationale is at these percentage levels. Why would someone want to earmark nine to twelve percent, or even sometimes as much as fifteen percent? Well, brand new product launch, new location launch. Um, they're going for it. They want insistence, period, and they want to knock this other competitor just out. They're they're tired of dealing with it. They want them out of the picture. Um, so they're pioneering a new technology. Um, so 9 to 12, 12 to 15 in those, those upper ranges, that's a pioneering mode of budgeting. And even someone who's been in business for a long time can decide that they're going to pioneer for a particular cause, for a reason. Again, back to those six first why questions. Why are you advertising, marketing, or wanting to tell your story in the first place? Um, and then the middle ranges, those 7, 8%, 6%, 7%, 8%, that is in a competitive mode. So 
you're maintaining um, and you're still fighting for that preference place, okay, in, in on the rungs of the ladder in a marketplace. And then maintenance mode is the, sl the smaller, you know, four to six percent maintenance mode. You're happy with where things are at. Competition isn't really the heat isn't turned up right now, and you're you're maintaining. But note, maintaining is four to six percent, not one to two. So. So that's walking you through budgeting, you know, they're either going to pick an arbitrary, they don't really have a plan, not good. They're going to use history, look in the rear view mirror, not good. We want them looking out the windshield. The future is tomorrow, not yesterday. Um, a percentage of gross projected revenue, gross projected sales, or percentage of growth that they want to achieve over the course of the next four quarters. That's, a, that's a, 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 an absolutely responsible way to do it. So once they are able to do that and see that that's important to do, budgeting for where they want to go, not for where they've been, uh, then you start walking them through and looping back in those answers they've given you on those previous marketing questions about why they're advertising, what they view as effective and efficient, um, and so then help them build a responsible percentage based on are they pioneering, uh, going for insistence on something, are they going for preference, they're in a competitive mode, so they're in the mid-range, or are they just in a maintenance mode? Um, they're they're um, happy with where they're at, but they realize they also don't want to give up any ground, so they have to at least be in a maintenance mode uh, to do that, 46% or thereabouts. So any questions on the budgeting? This is, this is something that takes some time and some skill to build um, and be able to have the confidence to ask these questions, but it's really important. You really shouldn't leave that first meeting without having a very good sense of what success looks like to them, what effective and efficient looks like to them, uh, with some specific numbers on how they budget, what they budget, and how they'll judge the effectiveness and efficiency of that budget's performance. ROI, that's what it's all about. See you again soon.